So I was working on my regular Monday video, but I had to pause to talk about this story because guys, this is really big news. The Sony PlayStation 2 has been around for 20 years. Hard to imagine. Not only was it the most successful home console of all time, it was also one of the most pirated. From the earliest swap magic discs to the action replay loaders, the earlier mod chips that connected to the front USB port that had the mod chip ability for just the CD based games. And then with the Messiah mod chips that came later on, you were able to then run DVD copies as well. And you know, these days, most people use something like free McBoot or free MC boot, depending on however you say it, because that's really the most easiest and straightforward way to exploit your PS2. But the holy grail of hacks always has to be when you insert a copied or a burnt disc into a unmodified system and can boot from it. And I'm here to tell you guys today, it's actually possible to do that on the PlayStation 2, thanks to a new exploit that is known as free DVD boot. Now, security researcher known as CTURT found this exploit after looking at many different ways for a long time to exploit the PlayStation 2. Initially, he started looking at the basic interpreter, which came with the earlier versions of the PS2 on PAL region systems only. And he had some success there, but he gave up looking down that path because it was PAL only and it was quite fiddly to exploit the PS2. But there was a lot of interesting work that was done there. So he decided to move on to other potential areas. And, you know, if you think about a PlayStation 2, what would some of the areas of exploitation be? You know, things like the networking capabilities, maybe the front USB storage. And of course, there's optical media, the CD and the DVD drives. And CTURT focused his attention on the DVD drive. When you put a movie DVD into a PlayStation 2, it loads up its DVD player and then plays the movie for you. Now, if you put just a regular DVD into a PC and browse the contents of the file system, there will be a file there known as video underscore ts.ifo and this is essentially the first file that any dvd player will read and it contains metadata about the video or the movie itself you know things like the number of chapters or you know the menus and the number of video files and what the video files link to all that kind of stuff it's really just kind of the index the table of contents that determines what the dvd is and what it should look like when you insert one into a dvd player so when you insert a dvd movie into a playstation 2 the exact same thing happens the console dvd player will read the file as normal so how did cturt exploit this particular approach well the dvd player software that loads when you insert a dvd into a playstation 2 is encrypted and stored in the rom known as the e-rom or the encrypted rom but there are tools out there that have been around for a while where you can actually extract the contents of the e-rom and then decrypt the rom so essentially what he did was he was able to extract the dvd player software that runs on the ps2 out of this e-rom and from here he loaded it up in a reverse engineering tool known as Ghidra and was able to take a close look at what was going on. So the approach was to essentially find a out of bounds or a buffer overflow exploit that had a contiguous block of memory where you could essentially insert a payload or a level two or a, a second stage loader and then from there be able to load a elf binary which is obviously the homebrew that you're attempting to use so his approach initially started out where he found the code that would parse the ifo file into memory and from here he was able to quickly determine that there was some buffer overflow vulnerabilities that were quickly identified so once he had found the out of bounds code and then identified this chunk of memory that could be potentially used for the payload he ended up overriding one of the function point indexes and overflowing that payload and then essentially when the code runs it will index into that function pointer but with the override that was previously done it will trigger into the payload itself now that's obviously a lot more simpler than what he has done he spent a lot of time and research trying to identify this but essentially this is you know a, a classic 
out of bounds buffer overflow type exploit that was identified in the DVD player software on the PlayStation 2's firmware. So you're probably wondering, well, what do I care about this exploit when I have my PlayStation 2 with free MC boot. Well, the thing is free MC boot or free McBoot, you actually need a modded system to generate a free McBoot memory card in the first place. This is a true entry point into an unmodified PlayStation. And this is kind of where things begin. And the ability for any console or anyone to put a copied disc or a burnt disc into an unmodified console and then boot from it that's stuff that you dream about as as someone that is into you know the modding scene i mean that's something that never happens unless it was you know like a dreamcast or something like that you know that's obviously something that that's happened before but you know those types of things are very very rare they're very difficult to identify and find so this is this is a pretty big deal guys now the other thing I will say is right now, this is still very much in the early phases of discovery. The exploit works and there is some video evidence that CTURT has done booting into a homebrew version of Tetris on his channel. Now, I attempted to set this up on my PlayStation 2 Slim, but unfortunately, my firmware is not compatible with the one that's been currently exploited. So the exploit currently works for firmware 3.10. Unfortunately, I'm running firmware 3.11, so when I tried to run it on my system, it did not work. But that's not to say that uh, there are people out there right now that are attempting to get this exploit working for all firmwares of the PlayStation DVD. So definitely, you know, this is still very much in the early phases of discovery. And, you know, the proof of concept phase is, is obviously here and gone. So now it's really about what comes next. And I think we're going to see some really exciting things come. Now, the other question is, what about commercial games? Can I burn a PlayStation 2 disc and boot into it? Well, yes, you can. And there is a way to do that as well. I'm not going to discuss it in this video, but there are ways to boot into burnt PlayStation 2 discs as well. So if you're familiar with ESR and, and how that works, then that's definitely something that will, you know, work on the free DVD boot exploit that has been found. Now, I guess the next thing is, are there going to be any repercussions from this? Probably not. I mean, the PlayStation 2 is a 20-year system. Sony has zero you know, interest in something like this these days, I think they'd be, you know, glancing over this information and maybe a little bit bemused that, you know, this exploit was found. But I don't think there's going to be any any kind of repercussions that come from this. But I guess the next question is, well, if this DVD exploit occurs on the PlayStation 2, could it occur on, say, the original Xbox or the PlayStation 3 or the PlayStation 4? Well, that remains to be seen. There could be a way to run a similar out of bounds or buffer overflow exploit with the DVD player built in software on other, other systems. So that is a possibility. I'm not saying anything is happening in those fronts, but you know, if this is a exploit that has been uncovered with DVD player software, then it may be something that could be reproducible on another system. That will only remain to be seen. Well, guys, I'm going to leave it here for this video. What do you think about the free DVD boot exploit after 20 years? And let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I think this is a massive story. And, you know, I want to give a huge thanks and shout out to CTURT for a, reaching out to me and letting me know about this and, you know, releasing this to the public. Everything is open source on GitHub. And he is encouraging people to take a look at this and come up with, you know, different patches and things like that. So, you know, huge thanks to him. And I know there are some other people out there that are working to get this exploit to run on different firmwares of the PlayStation 2. Now, I'm not sure if this is possible, but I think it would be really cool if we could see it running on the Japanese PSX. I'm not sure if that's something that would work given it has a completely different set of firmware and the way it manages DVDs is a lot different than just a regular PlayStation. But hey, it would be really cool to see it running on the Japanese PSX. And if that's something that would work, I would definitely be interested in that as well. Well, guys, we're going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. Leave me a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.